Hey everybody, today what we're gonna cover is reclaiming your old PC that's a few generations old and turning it into a monster of a gaming machine. So I'll show you what we do with this exact computer, where we started and where we end up. The unofficial sponsor of Tech Sassery is brought to you by Hum Kombucha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hum makes you think. Hum. While you drink. While you drink. Okay, so today what we're going to be talking about is that old dusty computer that sat in your closet or your storage unit, or maybe you were using it and you were just that messy. Ah. But, hey, <laughs> but we're gonna talk about that old dusty computer that's probably about three, four years old, maybe a couple generations older in parts. And we're gonna upgrade that to meet today's standard so you can play all the current titles at ultra settings. Oh, like Minecraft? <laughs> Jesus. Basically what we have is, this is actually Ken's computer. He bought this computer uh, three, four years ago and used it for about a year or two. Uh, he did a lot of gaming, a lot of streaming. Um, he even did video editing using this computer. And for the time, it was a pretty decent system. I mean, it cost him about $1,000. Um, he bought it as a display unit down from 1500 from our local Fry's, which is was awesome. <laughs> it used to be like the spot to go. They're doing okay. Honestly, I wish they were doing better, but that's not the point of the video. Uh, so he bought this and it's actually a good system. I know you can't really see much inside, uh, but he does have an all-in-one cooler. Looks like an i5, maybe a 7600K. We haven't even plugged it in yet. Like I know very little about this system other than what I can see. But I imagine this might be exactly like what some of you guys have sitting underneath your desk or on top of your desk. And that's the point. We're gonna open this up, find out what exact components are in here, see what we need to upgrade and add those upgrades and have an awesome computer. Woo! Woo! What we're gonna start with is we're gonna benchmark this guy. We're gonna see exactly where it lands today, right now. And then from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna address everything in this. And yes, that includes the the dust. Hey, dude, we're, <laughs> we we're gonna make sure it has good airflow. We're gonna make sure it has the most recent components that don't break the bank, but still give you great performance. And then we're just gonna test it. We're gonna benchmark it afterwards and compare the two and see what that upgrade gets you as far as gaming. Mines. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so just First run in, let's see if we can actually get this thing even benchmarked and working. Look at that. That's beautiful. Oh yeah, dude, we are, we're rocking. Okay, perfect. Well, we're gonna turn this off uh, for now because it's password and stuff and things. I'm like literally about to be like sneezing all over the place from all the dust. <laughs> Hey, we've got an i5 6600K. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. We can fuck, we can overclock that bad boy. Um, that's gonna be nice. We've got eight gigs of RAM. I'm probably just gonna swap that out and use this eight gigs somewhere else. That'll be nice. Um, we have a full version of Windows 10 Home. So yeah, pretty much uh, rocking there. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. So this is a like a perfect example of an older style computer just trying to benchmark it. We're getting super slow speeds just unpacking. Like we're not right now this is not using the internet and it's taking a very long time and as you saw it just hit it went to no respond real quick. Um, so it just has a really hard time. This is the perfect example of how this computer can improve. This one's super nice. So, I mean, a lot of people know what user benchmark is, but it's super nice because you can compare it to like other people that are actual involved in building computers and making and, you know, improving theirs. So it'll actually compare it to, with similar specs to your computer. 
It lets you know if it's running at where it should be for the hardware that you have. It'll access things like your uh, all of your storage, all of your RAM, CPU, graphics card, um, things like that. So completed. Hey, I'm gonna close this bad boy. I'm not gonna update Chrome at the moment. So this is our rating. This is before anything else. We have a 26% for gaming, 52% for desktop, 30% for workstation. So we have a raft for gaming, a yacht for desktop, and a sailboat for workstation. That's pretty, that makes sense. I mean, we don't have a lot of RAM. Our PC and our motherboard are the two best things on here. So basically this is saying uh, you're in the 53rd percentile Ooh. for individuals with the i5 6600K. Um, we can get this up, honestly. I'm, I'm probably not gonna do Cinebench on this just because I, I, I'll have to create an account, I'll have to sign in, and it, I think we have enough of what we need for kind of a baseline to know that we definitely need a new graphics card. We definitely need a new hard drive. We need to freshen up the system so we can get more power, maybe even overclock this i5. And we may need an extra eight gigs of RAM. So with that said, I'm gonna end this. We're gonna go over the parts that we chose and the build. Oh, we're recording? Okay, so the parts I've chosen for this particular upgrade is kind of the best that you can get for a middle of the road budget. It's not extremely high and it's not extremely low. I wanted to come in, you know, spending about five, maybe $700 on upgrades. And the reason why is if we can get another three years out of this system without having to buy more upgrades, now is the time to do it. You spent a thousand, you spent 1500, two, three years ago. It's time to put at least half of that into your build. So you have something that lasts you another three years that is a strong performer. So what I've decided to do is we're going to upgrade the power supply. Now, anything that's branded, uh, from EVGA, from, uh, from Corsair, from you know pretty much any of the big brands out there at 600 to 750 watts is gonna be enough, right? I'm using Thermaltake. It's on the lower end, basically, so I could afford to get something a little bit better in the graphics department, uh, because I think that's where it's gonna count the most on this build. So speaking about that, what we're gonna be putting in today is the RX 5700 XT. Now, this guy, if you're not familiar, is basically the best bang for your buck right now in graphics cards. It, in most cases, uh, overpowers the 2070 Super, definitely takes the cake versus the 2060 Super, and is about the same price as the 2060 Super. So. Uh, for about four, 450 there, you've got a killer graphics card. I have two more upgrades. So um, you guys have seen me use this brand in the past and I actually found that it's a really good brand. So this is a 3200 megahertz kit from Oloy. Yeah. Yes, Oloy. And this is actually an RGB kit. You don't need an RGB kit, but that's just kind of how they make their RAM is RGB. Um, so I'm going to be adding that on there. The only other thing I have to add to that is the M.2 SSD. And uh, I'm waiting for it to arrive. It's not quite here. It's going to be here today. Uh, but it is a, I believe the 660p from Intel. And it's a terabyte. So I believe those guys range anywhere from like 70 to $100 right now. So pretty fair. So if we add all of that up, we have about 450 for the graphics card. We have for the RAM, we have about $80. And then for the power supply, I'm gonna go 60. So we're looking at about $600 there. We add in that uh, M.2 NVMe SSD, 
we're at about $700, which is half of what this computer would have costed three years ago. Um, and we're gonna benchmark that afterwards and show you where all of that lands. So I don't even know where to start, but I guess I have to tear this apart. Start with the computer. Yeah, I gotta tear this apart and that's gonna take me some time. So you guys are probably gonna see a few snapshots of that, me just kind of going to town. I'm gonna have to really clean this up. Um, I hope that we can use this case because it's actually not a bad case. If you are building something, put it in the comments below. Let us know what you're building. Um, I want to hear from, from you guys. So. Hey, buddy. Earlier, I wanted to just, before plugging it in, I wanted to check the CPU and kind of condition and make sure that this pump works. And I know you can probably hardly see behind here, but uh, basically, on, probably once a year, not that it's 100% necessary, but you'll want to replace your thermal paste. And the reason why is that acts as the, uh, basically the conductor between your cooler and your CPU. And it seemed to work just fine earlier, but if you're not getting good conductivity, then your CPU can't cool properly, which can be a huge issue. Unplug this, unplug that. Boom, oh, wow. let's take a look. So yeah, it's, oh wow. Yeah, that's pretty dried up. Um, and you can see a lot of pockets and cracks on it. Crack is whack. Yeah, so this is definitely, this is definitely something that needs to be cleaned, reapplied, uh, it, and you'll get better conductivity out of that. So same, same with down here. It's really not even wet anymore, so whatever. Boom, I don't even know if I unplugged everything properly, but all right. Oh, here we go. Unplug that SATA connection. This one as well. Shut up and sit down. Are you recording? <laughs> Okay, so this is something I want to point out that I even talked to, um, in, like, I think it was an Intel rep the other day. They talked about new systems coming out. They're pre-built that are not just going to have generic parts thrown in. And this is a perfect example of that. Like this is an Ultra. It's an Ultra 500 watt ATX power supply. There's nothing special about it. This is so generic. It has ketchup and mustard cords. Um, it doesn't have any cable management. It's not modular. There's really no special rating on it. I mean, yeah, it has all of the ROHS compliant FCC stuff on here, but uh, nothing more than that. And I want to let you guys know, when you buy a pre-built system, this is what you get. You get you get a generic power supply. Uh, sometimes you get a generic motherboard. You get a generic SSD. You know, nothing is brand name with high quality components besides a few items like your processor, your graphics card, and maybe your motherboard. That is really about it. Unless you get into ultra high-end gaming, which you'll spend 
a few thousand dollars on per system. But when you're at the thousand dollar price point, you could build something better with less money, not a ton less, but less money and have name brand high end components that I wouldn't be pulling this out if this was like an EVGA. I wouldn't be doing it. Even if it was only 500 watts, I'd still keep it. Rant done. I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't. Uh, but I do know that this is clean now. No more dust. Yo. And sorry if I'm like coughing and sneezing. There is a lot of dust on this guy. <laughs> That's okay though. So you have the back plate. I'm just gonna pop this under to start. We have the M.2 NVMe. This is the 660P from Intel. A massive increase on read write speeds, system boot up times, downloads, just everything that your computer does from open to close basically. Perfect. So I'm sure many of you are aware of this, but um, you do want to put these in dual channel, which is your second and fourth channel. Bam, sucker. Perfect amount. Okay, I'm gonna line this sucker up. Look at that. Done. I think this guy's gonna go over in this direction this time. Instead of last time, it was on the other direction. And we'll probably use another fan somewhere. Right? So it just kind of blows my mind that they put this build together and it doesn't have the functions that it should. So it makes me feel good. I don't know, just wanted to point that out. <laughs> are you saying I got ripped off? No, I'm just saying, man, these guys are really just kind of at the bottom of the barrel picking up. They're using, for the, it's a perfect example of using whatever parts they have available to throw these together. I'm not really bashing anyone per se. I'm just, it. when you see something online that's got in right now the 5700 in it and a Ryzen 5, cool, you're buying those two parts. Everything else is bottom of the barrel. So just keep an eye, when you go out and buy something that's pre-built, check all the other components. If it doesn't have it in the listing, then it's probably not the greatest build. And you can do it yourself. You can literally build it yourself. So I didn't get ripped off? No, you got ripped off. I'm, okay. I'm just kidding. You didn't get ripped off. Yay! Boom, sucker. Okay, so this is the great debate. This is the great debate. How do we mount this? guy here. Is there enough room underneath for airflow? They, we do have a good gap and we're going to have a graphics card about here. And there's also a um, kind of a, a standoff here to mount the power supply a little bit higher to the case so you can get a good amount of airflow under it and through here 
I would mount the fan down so we can pull cool air from outside of the case. Uh, if I didn't have, if I was putting this on somewhere that was a little bit warmer or maybe had carpet underneath, I would definitely mount this fan side up. I think many of you know that already. So I'm gonna do it fan down on this particular scenario. So here's the nice part. Literally, if, I, if we didn't have any other hard drives or anything like that, and just had this M.2 one terabyte SSD, this would be it. I would like be routing maybe four cables at the most, three cables, and if it was modular, three cables, and I'd be done. Okay, so at this point in the, uh, in the deal, I'm gonna be adding the 5700 XT. And again, this is like, this is what I recommend. If you've got that three-year-old build that has some good, reliable parts, maybe again, like I said, you already have the SSD. You, maybe you already have 16 gigs of RAM. Well then, in that case, my, the, the biggest upgrade you'd be making is the graphics card. And 100%, I'm gonna recommend the 5700 XT. This exact, uh, 5700 XT is the MSI Mech Edition. That's what you're going to want to get. You want to get one of the AIB partner cards that has the dual fans because the reference card is not the greatest when it comes to heat. Well, all I got to do is manage some cables here um, and manage myself for another few minutes and we can pretty much fire this guy up. So, and then we'll benchmark. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's our first run. I'm gonna get a look at her. Get a look at her. No, I'm kidding. Gonna take a second. Oh, that's pretty. Mm. All right, so there we are. So if you didn't notice, I did put the M.2 in. Uh, I pre-installed Windows on it. So basically we didn't have to go through that whole setup process here. Um, so I'm gonna download this guy and I haven't done anything to it. I might do a separate video where we do some overclocking, but on this video, I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna run some benchmarks. So here we are. This is the download. We did a nice little snippet last time of how long it took to do the benchmark uh, and download Cinebench. So we'll kind of go over that here. Boom, baby. Look at that. Look at that. Boom. We have really stepped up our game here. Like I said, we spent about $700 and we're at 103% for gaming, 101% for desktop use, and workstation is 55. I could get workstation up higher by doing an overclock. I've got an all-in-one cooler. I could probably get this guy up to 3.8 on all cores, which would probably jump this up another 10%. Um, we're looking, if we go, we're in the 51st percentile Honestly, the biggest thing holding us back is probably this processor, because if we look at the graphics, we're at 114. We're in, we're above the average individual here for performance on this. Um, with our NVMe M.2, we're at 232 percent bench, which is awesome. Uh, our RAM is also slowing us down. That's at our 
It's decent RAM. We probably could use an overclock of the RAM. It may not be running at 3200. No, it's not. It's running at 2133 megahertz. So honestly, just tuning this guy up, um, and it even says it right here, ensure that a dual channel XMP is enabled in your BIOS. We haven't done any of that. This is stock, we just put it together. If we do that and we overclock that CPU, guaranteed this is gonna go up to like 75% on the workstation, um, somewhere around there. So, heck of a deal, honestly. $700 and you took a, well, what did we have before? We're like 35% gaming? Yeah, 25%, I think. Desktop was like 50, maybe. And workstation was very similar. It was it was down there. We were in like the 75th percentile, 50 percent percentile, or, or I don't I don't even know. And that was with the parts that we had. So does this mean I can play Minecraft? <laughs> I will I will murder you. How about that? I will murder you. This is great. No, I really thought this was great. Let's play a couple games and we'll wrap this up, guys. And I'll kind of go back to. Um, our regular spot and we'll end there uh, and we'll discuss the parts and how we felt about this build but I'm going to play a game or two clock a few benchmarks and, uh, and then we'll go over there all right well I'll, I'll keep it brief we wrapped everything up the computer turned out great yes I need to do some fine tuning and you know potentially even overclock this i5 uh, because it, it did come in a little bit lower than I wanted it to as a workstation, which actually really limits the amount of graphics we have. But that's not really the point of this video. The point of this video, like I said, is for you to know that you can take a computer that's a few years old, two, three, four years old, that's maybe been sitting around, salvage about four to $500 worth of parts, put another six, $700 into it of newer components and get yourself a computer like in our scenario that's 103% on the gaming scale and over 100% as a uh, desktop, which is amazing because all we had to spend was about six to $700. Now, you can cut a few things back and you can amp a few things up. You could get more RAM. You could get a different card. Again, this really just applies to what you guys wanna do with your setup. The reason I chose what I did is because we're specifically going for gaming. We want the best gaming experience possible. So I wanna ask you guys to go ahead and put any builds that you're looking at doing down in the comments and put your top three, what you would wanna upgrade in on your PC. And what I'll do is the number one recommended, I will put in the next video and I'll shout you guys out. And maybe what we can do if we're doing any upgrade videos in the future is we can use those exact components for our next build. So who knows, I had a good time with this build. I honestly wasn't quite sure where, we're gonna, where we were gonna land because I didn't know the exact components before I got in. Obviously, you guys are gonna know your exact components and you're gonna be able to tailor this to whatever you want. And as I said before, just if you have any questions on you know, what you should upgrade, send me a list of what you have internally and I'll make some good recommendations, but Honestly, the 5700 XT, if you, if you need a graphics upgrade, is probably my number one recommendation right now. I'm not sure that I would spend money on anything else unless I'm going a step lower on graphics cards. Um, and the RAM and the power supply are subjective. Same with the M.2 NVMe SSD. Those are all subjective. In my opinion, these are what we chose, but your opinion could be different. So. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. It's your support that keeps this channel going. So if you've made it this far in the video, give us a like on this video and subscribe to our channel. Well, that's enough out of me, you guys. We'll see you in the next video. Have a good day. Can I play Minecraft now? No.